Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be looking at another resin. Um, this one comes to us from CenterTech. Uh, I basically spent the whole weekend playing around with this, running different tests and exposure times, etc. Uh, and I've come up with some mixed results. So I'll share with those with you in a second. I've been very interested in trying this resin for a while because I've seen it kind of circulate around the internet. Um, people claiming it has amazing prints and amazing castability and you know just generally it's a good resin and it's priced very affordably. Um, check out our unboxing video for those. I can't recall what they are off the top of my head. So I had some very mixed results this weekend. Um, I started off printing based off of the information that I was given from the uh, owner of this company, CenterTech. Uh, and I this is this is my results. Um, it's not really what it's supposed to look like, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I improved. I improved on this drastically as I went through. So the very the settings that he gave me at the start were 110 seconds for the initial layer, and nine seconds for the the rest. And as you can see, that did not work out uh, very well at all. Um, I think 110 seconds is a little bit too much for a base layer, uh, especially at this thickness, because of the curling. Um, as you see, so as we go through the next ones, I, I lowered that to 100 seconds, and it seems to have fixed the curling. So it did not overexpose this part of the resin so much that it um, started to, to warp severely. Anyway, so 110 second initial, nine second for the rest of the layers. Then the next one we did, uh, this one was a hundred second base layer, 12 seconds for the rest. And it doesn't look that much better, but as you can see, there are actually some signs that it is starting to improve. The, there's actually, you know, some semblance of a ball on the, on the little raft here. And the hundred seconds is a, a measure that I stuck with because as you can see, it didn't curl. So this really does help. Then after that, uh, I, I decided that was also a failure, obviously. Then I moved up to 15 seconds. And as you can see, it gets even better from there. 100 second base. So we have very little curling on the base. And you can actually see the models start to come out. Uh, I would say all of them failed in one way or another. But they printed. They didn't just fall off, which is awesome. After this, I did one more at 17 seconds a layer. So 100 second base, 17 seconds a layer. This one, again, still more failures, um, but there are a couple, especially these couple in the middle, these three, they actually turned out pretty well, but not flawless. I've printed this model enough that when I look at it, I can tell that something isn't quite right. So the little like, cage-like supports that, that kind of make up the majority of this model are incredibly thin and they're not very substantial. So I, I, I don't think this is a complete print. It could be better, but I was starting to get way outside of the actual recommended setting. So at 17 seconds a layer, um, I was recommended nine. Other people on Prusa SL1s have got success with nine. Um, I decided that, okay, this is too much. Uh, something is not quite right here. My first assumption was actually, I think my correct assumption, that this resin simply does not handle very thin filigree type stuff very well. Um, and I believe that's correct because after I did this one, I switched my, my print to these. This is um, kind of a, a more standardized print bed that I'm trying to get into um, because it has a nice range across the different models. We have a very thin type engagement ring with prongs. We have uh, another, I guess, sort of engagement type ring with, with lots of prongs and um, a bunch of different types of setting. Then we have a large hollow model. We have a heavy we have one that's heavy with smooth and texture. And then there's this other little filigree one down here. And this one kind of goes with this print, but it doesn't attach to the raft. Anyway, um, overall, this is a really good print. 
and I did not use 17 seconds per layer. I went back, I went back to 11 seconds per layer. When I look around the supports in particular down here, there's no sagging whatsoever, or very, very little at the very least. All of the texture on the snake seems to have come out really nice. There's different types of scales that I blended here from ZBrush where there's, you know, like body scales that are very thick and heavy. And then there's like the underside scales, the ones that like propel the snake along. And when you look at some of these thinner models, this kind of just, as I said, confirms my suspicion that this resin is not particularly good at filigree stuff. So this flower-like model here is very, very thin. Yeah, so the thick edges, this is the... This is the stuff around the outside of the border. These are 0 0.4 millimeters in size. So the ones inside look to be about half that. So let's say 0 0.2 mil. That's very, very small. Uh, and then there's this other one over here, the one that the, the ring made out of rings, I suppose. These ones are, they look very thin. Um, having done this exact type of or this exact print before on other resins. These look very, very skinny. Uh, I don't think that's an illusion of the light. They are actually not exposed very well. They're a little bit too thin. So I don't suspect this would cast very well. And then on this guy, you can see it actually warped a little bit. There's, uh, it kind of turned into an oval shape. I guess there wasn't enough support on this side uh, and it just didn't turn out as well as it could have, but I mean, I wouldn't consider this a failure. This is kind of, this is the model where I would say any smaller than this and you are going to fail. This resin cannot handle something smaller than this. That's just my opinion. I'm sure if you overexposed it enough, you could make it work. But this actually turned out really quite nice. All the prongs are there. All the little supports around here. These are pre-supported, by the way. This is not something that I did. I just downloaded this file. All of these pre-supports, they're looking a little bit thin, but they definitely came out and they did their job. The rest of the ring looks good, aside from that warp. I would say this is castable, but my expectations for how well it comes out are pretty low, just off the top of my head. We still have to do our casting test. We're going to try it either way, and hopefully we get a good casting. So let's go get these sprued up. I will... Get on that immediately and i will catch you guys probably in another few days when uh when this is all done So we've just finished the cast for CenterTech V3 casting resin. And I am, forgive me, I have, we just tried a different a little experiment and uh, it worked phenomenally well. Um, this resin is very interesting. As mentioned in the printing portion of this, it does not handle printing filigree, very small, uh, thin spindly items very well. And that holds up as well in the casting. Um, I have three models here that are in kind of various stages of filigree-esque. They're mostly stone setting pieces. Uh, this one had, it's, it's obviously a failed print or a failed cast. Uh, this one had the most um, supports involved. It, was, it, did, and it didn't turn out. So I'm gonna make the call now saying that CenterTech V3 LCD resin this is just specific to the LCD one. I don't know about the other. Um, this one, this particular resin is not good for filigree work in general. It cannot print it very well and it cannot seem to cast it very well. I think that's a very good trade-off, however, because of how well it handled heavy items. This is a, an area where a lot of other resins tend to fail. They, they just don't seem to be able to handle the, the thermal expansion or, or something isn't quite there. And it just doesn't allow for the level of detail that I was able to get out of this particular snake ear. Um, this is a, a model that I created and I put in a ton of scales all over, different types of scales even. There's little tiny ones, then there's the bottom, which kind of, you know, like the, the scales they grab and move the snake along. And then there's this guy here, this big skull ring, it's hollow, but like this stuff, in 
in large models, phenomenally good. We followed the casting instructions to the T and we did the boric acid method. Now we've never done this before in the studio. We've always tended to just go straight R&R plastic cast only. Um, but it was recommended by the company. This is what we should do. And we did it and it turned out really odd. I've as I said, I've never done it. The, what the boric acid does is it hardens the investment to the point where it's like a rock, it's like concrete. And it did that, <laughs> so much so that when we went to go and quench the flask in water, it didn't do anything, which is really, really odd. I've never experienced that before. It was clearly a very hot flask. The, it was trying, it was really trying to get in there and do its job, but it just couldn't. If it had not been for the other project that I just finished, um, if you haven't seen that video, by the way, link above or somewhere, uh, that one's with our, our new pressure washing cleaning station. If it hadn't been for the pressure washer, I think I'd I, I would be doing this for days, trying to clean all the investment out of these little areas. And uh, the, the pressure washer did it in like four minutes, which is like, it's amazing. <laughs> anyway. Um, I digress from the, the actual resin itself. So in summary, I really like CenterTech resin. It's at a very good price point. Um, it has a couple of little flaws, just that one that it cannot do filigree. I'm gonna call that very solidly, but for heavy models, I strongly recommend it. The detail in the printing is really good when you have it over a certain point. Please use these, uh, these three as a kind of a benchmark or as reference for your models if you're trying to figure out what is what exactly is a heavy model and what is a very light model what is filigree um, use these as an example the customer support was really good when i received it i simply messaged uh, mr center and i said this is what i've got uh, in terms of printer and you know all that stuff and he just gave me all the information from his community and it was great, it all worked out really well. So we've also tried uh, doing some test emails in terms of like customer support. He was back to us within 24 hours. So that's all really good. I, I like this resin, I strongly recommend trying it. Um, how it falls in our ranked list, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to say because that it, it can't do one thing really well, but it does one thing exceptional. Um, I'm gonna have to think about it and we'll definitely put in a couple of little um, notes in our in our ranked list for for how well we we like center tech. Uh, so just a big note um, We have changed our ranked list from a um, from a membership exclusive Piece of information to a free one. We we figured well, it's why why aren't we offering this for free? So we've moved it from our YouTube platform over to our website and that will be linked below we have a couple upcoming as well, so stay tuned for those if you haven't already liked and subscribed. If you do need more one-on-one -on -one help, like say setting up your printer or your casting setup or anything really jewelry related, um, feel free to check out our membership program so we can offer more of a one-on-one -on -one custom experience for you to get you started. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.